Hark, and well met folks, and welcome to the Archaeology Brunch Stream. My name is Classroom Meister Chris, and today we are going to be discussing the fabled Viking Age Sunstones. The products of myth and legend, or something more legitimate? Something that we'll discover today. I've been looking into the Sunstone situation for the past week or so. I started to make a couple TikToks about it, and I was waiting for cloudy days to work out where I would be able to actually go out and practically try and use the Sunstone. Um, and I just haven't had the chance, like it's been, you know, wonky weather and timing and everything like that, but I, I finally managed to try and practically use some of these things. So I want to be able to sit down and get all of these ideas out um, because the findings are kind of curious, but we'll take a look through what people have said about Sunstone so far. Basically the findings that other people have gotten and uh, uh, all sorts of things. Professor Rune is in session. That's right. It's the archeology span brunch stream and we're talking about brain stuff. So I have to be Mr. Nerd today. Speaking of big brain, I already just remembered that I left the rock upstairs. <laughs> I left the Sunstone upstairs. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to run and grab it at one point. All right, folks, listen, we know the deal. It's that part of the video where I come on here and I tell you to subscribe to my channel. And I know it's the annoying part of the video that nobody wants to watch, but here it is. The analytics don't lie and everybody says that you gotta subscribe and you gotta push those subscriptions. So I'm doing my part. Let's have you guys do yours. Subscribe to the channel, please. So, Viking Age sunstones, right? They are something which uh, has grown very popular in kind of modern media and modern interpretations and portrayals of what Vikings were doing and what the what the Viking Age kind of looked like. I think a lot of people, when you say the Viking sunstone, they kind of have a general idea of what you're talking about, you know? Small rock that when you hold it up, uh, it helps you find where the sun is. But I think that the ideas of how you find these sunstones, like how you find this stuff and and where you, how you use it, um, maybe doesn't meet quite the expectations that people have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look uh, through a couple things. I have a bunch of stuff primed up, all right? We're gonna look at a video that just kind of gives a, a big overview over what the sunstone is. It's a pretty good video. Uh, then we're going to go through piece by piece. We're gonna discuss uh, what the sunstone's uh, use is in sagas and myths, like where it shows up in those. Uh, we're gonna look at a little bit of archeological details in terms of what research has already been done on Viking sunstones and what that can tell us. And then uh, we're going to do, delve a little bit into the science behind why the Sunstones do the things that they do. Uh, and then finally, we're going to wrap up with a little practical video that I took of me using what we in the community currently believe is the closest thing to a Viking Age Sunstone. In the meantime, I am going to run and grab this rock. You, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put on the video. I'm going to put on the video while I go and get the rock. That's that's good. That's that's good. All right. Between the 8th and the 11th centuries, the Vikings were perhaps the most skilled and successful navigators in the world. From their homeland in Scandinavia, they sailed huge distances, raiding, trading, and settling across the Northern Hemisphere. They reached as far as the Caspian Sea, Iceland, Greenland, and even North America, almost 500 years before any other European explorers. There has been a lot of really exciting new research, research and stuff coming out about how far and how quickly the Vikings got to different areas across the northern Atlantic and the, and the Arctic Sea and everything like that. And somehow they managed to do this using only simple navigational tools. No magnetic compasses, no sextants, only the sun and stars. One of the tricks that Viking navigators had up their sleeves was the ability to find the sun, even when it was below the horizon or behind cloud cover, using something called a sunstone. The use of the sunstone was first written down in the Icelandic legend Ralfus Thauder. So this is, I think, where a lot of like the magical element of these sunstones comes into play. It's it's a cloud, you know, you're able to look through cloudy 
weekdays, and also technically sometimes they were able to do it after the sun had set over the horizon. There's theories about how they were able to do that anyway, uh, because it, it involves a lot of like refracting light, which we'll discuss in a little bit. And when they would when they did that, they were able to pinpoint the location of the sun, which which would seem magical <laughs> to many people, especially during that time period. It was such a curious thing, and it's not mentioned in very many places. This saga is one of the few places where they actually discuss this concept. I think there's only maybe two or three mentions of the Viking Sunstone that we've been able to find. Yeah. But is this story true? The obligatory Vikings TV show reference <laughs> needed to be made. Did the Vikings really have a magic stone that could let them see through the clouds or over the horizon? Maybe it was just a myth or a metaphor. Or maybe it was something like this. This is a piece of Iceland spar, a mineral made of crystallized calcium carbonate, or calcite. Iceland spar can be used for navigation thanks to a special physical property called birefringence. Birefringence means that the amount that light is refracted when it passes through the crystal depends on the polarity of the light. When a birefringence is going to be the big term of the day. Um, birefringence is actually really fun, and I can show it in a practical way right now. Give me a second. Let me get a let me get a piece of paper. So birefringence is like the neatest. I want to do it before I want to do I don't know if they do it in this video, but I want to do it before they do because it'll make me feel cool. So, I've got this notebook with a with a line drawn on it, right? And I've got my piece of Icelandic spar, which I'm going to rub off. I have some I have some pieces of crayon that I would that were on there for reasons that will also be made clear in a little bit. So, we've got our line here and we've got our piece of Icelandic spar. Now when you take the spar and you put it over, you could see it makes a double line right there. And if you turn it, oh god, I'm trying to do this like mirrored and watching on my stream, and then if you turn it, it becomes one single line again, and then if you turn it again, it becomes... two lines. So that right there... <laughs> that right there is the process known as birefringence, where it's a, it's a method of refracting light where it takes the light through and it kind of diverts an image into two things. That birefringence is intrinsic to the concept of how these sunstones might have been used, at least according to the more popular theory on their use. There are a couple of different possibilities that they might have done, but that is the more popular theory on how and why um, sunstones were used. It has to do with birefringence. I think they're going to talk about it right now. Beam of light, like sunlight, passes through the crystal. It's split into two beams. These are called the ordinary and the extraordinary beams. You can see this by looking through the crystal. You can see that everything that's viewed through the crystal appears doubled. I just showed you that. I told you I wanted to beat them to the punch. You're an extraordinary beam? Oh, Amelia, thank you. Thank you. You're all extraordinary too. You're you're my extraordinary beams. <laughs> but how can this be used to find the sun? Well, we can't be entirely sure, but recent studies found a possible method. So, the, yeah, the reason why we cannot be sure how the Viking sunstone is used is because it's never written down the methodology of how to do it. They just say you take the stone, you look through it, and you find the sun. To be fair, the saga writers, uh, they probably didn't know either. <laughs> that's that's a fair point. When TV writers try to explain hacking, yes, the saga writers describing the use of a Viking Age sunstone is a one-to-one -one corollary between TV writers going, I'm in. First, a mark was drawn on the top of the crystal using pine tar or charcoal. Next, the crystal would be pointed at the brightest part of the horizon. The navigator would look up through the bottom of the crystal so that they could see two dots refracted through the stone. Mm -hmm. Then they would move the crystal along the horizon until both dots appeared equal in brightness. When this happened, the navigator would know that the front of the crystal was pointed toward the sun. When so this is so, this is such a tough situation because 
trying to figure out exactly how this thing worked was so difficult. And I have a video of it, and I'm going to show it later of me trying to do it. And it's 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 a little it, it was a little bit of a mess. And I did have a control in the fact that I knew where the sun was. It's a difficult little process to master. And I think that part of the reason why I didn't have as much success with it was because of that. But spoilers, I'll get to that in a bit. When this method was tested under experimental conditions, it was found that with a bit of practice, this method could be used to find the sun with an accuracy of just one or two degrees, which is certainly accurate enough to be used to navigate. Yeah, one to two degrees, I've also heard one to two percent of a, like, you know, oh, within one to two percent of the horizon or whatever, uh, is incredible. That's, that's ludicrous accurate for me, at, at least in my mind. I don't know how accurate that is in terms of, like, actual accuracy, like looking at it on the horizon, but to me that sounds like it's dummy accurate. Of course, the only way to prove that Iceland Spire was the mythical sunstone would be to find physical evidence of a sunstone being used for navigation. In 2012, divers excavating a shipwreck in the English Channel found a piece of Iceland Spire, the right shape and size to be used as a sunstone. The shipwreck has been dated to the late 16th century, hundreds of years after the end of the Viking Age. But it's entirely possible that through trade and exchange, Viking navigational technology was picked up by other cultures and was still being used hundreds of years after the last Viking ship sailed the North Atlantic. So that's a very important point. The only piece of sunstone, quote unquote, sunstone that has ever been found in a uh, uh, naval context was in a 16th century English ship, and it was found alongside other navigational tools, such as a traditional sextant. There has never been a piece of Icelandic spar or anything else that could be construed as a sunstone ever recovered from a Viking Age site. You're on Team Iceland Spar. I mean, Icelandic Spar is the most likely candidate. <gasps> Hello! Thank you very much. Guys, the brunch part of the brunch stream has started. <gasps> you got me waffle race cars? Yes! Peanut butter and chocolate filled waffle race cars? Look at the cross section. Oh, that's ooey gooey. Ooh, that's going to mess with my ability to lecture. Stop the archaeology, it's waffle time. Listen. Archaeology is only 50% of the archaeology brunch stream. Those waffles are fire. Uh, where was I? Whatever. The excavation of the shipwreck is still ongoing, and maybe someday, with the help of more research and new discoveries, the mystery of the Sunstone will be solved once and for all. All right, pausing for uh, content so that you guys can see the sources. This was an extremely well done video. I was very pumped when I saw this. The, uh, the YouTuber who made it is named Terra Incognita. They do um, history content, so. But now getting into the uh, nitty gritty of this, as we said, the Viking Age Sunstone has been discussed in the sagas. This is primarily where we know it. The big saga is Hrafn Saga Svein Bjarnason. This is kind of the one main one that discusses it the most. And the translation of it, I'm, I'm using Wikipedia, which is all right for just like a simple translation or something. This has been verified in the Icelandic. Uh, I, I could read it for the practice, but I'm probably going to butcher it, so I'm not going to. Uh, I'll just read it in English. The weather was thick and snowy, as Sigurdr had predicted. Then the king summoned Sigurdr and Dagger, Radolfur's sons, to him. Uh, the king made people look out, and they could nowhere see a clear sky. Then he asked Sigurdr to tell where the sun was at that time. He gave a clear assertion. Then the king made him fetch the solar stone and held it up and saw where light radiated from the stone and thus directly verified Sigurdr's prediction. So that's pretty much the information that we have. He had to go get the sunstone, held it up, and saw where the light came out of the stone and, and then knew the prediction. And that's, that's, that's the only information we have. And it's like, oh, uh, uh, okay. Let's see what the archaeology tells us about this. This here is a potential theorized device, which might have been able to be used in conjunction with a sunstone to kind of create a navigational tool. Seems a little overly complicated based on what they were talking about. I don't think this was really what they were talking about in Hrafn Saga. The direction of the sun was very important, right? and the need to determine its location was crucial in order to maintain your bearing and to keep going with what you were doing. And the Vikings didn't have or have access to a lot of the same navigational tools, but they were still widely renowned as one of the best naval navigators in the medieval period at that time. 
And the question is, how were they able to do this? A large part of it came down to their ship construction, right? We knew that. But then another part of it really came down to what sort of things we were looking at with their navigation. The Sunstone being primarily probably the way that they made it to England and beyond with such relative accuracy. So looking for this polarization of light, it seems like calcites or, or, or various types of calcite crystals would be the way to use birefringence to identify the sun's location. We've already seen birefringence in action from earlier tonight. So generally talking about calcites as a group, Icelandic spar is a calcite within that group. A team led by a man named Guy Ropars, uh, I'm probably saying his name right, Guy, Guy Ropar, <laughs> a physicist at the University of Rennes. They took a, chice, a chunk of calcite um, Icelandic spar, rock familiar to the Vikings, locked it within a wooden device that beams light from the sky onto the crystal through a hole and projects the double image onto a surface for comparison. So what it, what it is is they basically just created a device that adds the step in there so that you're not kind of taking it up and looking. They just kind of take whatever image is being absorbed by the light and the stone and just kind of projecting it into this box for easier viewing. They then used it over the course of a completely overcast day, and they took measurements from a point on land where they knew the sun's exact trajectory. So they knew the direction that the sun was going to go, because we have a lot better technology in that sort of department nowadays, and they were able to predict where the sun was going to be, and they compared it to the evidence that they gathered using this sunstone. If the Vikings had used calcite as a sunstone, it would have enabled them to navigate on cloudy days. The research team's sunstone came within 1% of the true location of the sun, even after it had dipped below the far horizon. We're not talking about middle of the night here, we're talking about like just that moment after sunset, like twilight hours, right? That's, they were still able to determine the location of the sun during that time period, which is bonkers, because that would have added extra time to the end of the day when the Vikings were navigating uh, for them to have a pretty decent idea before they would need to kind of like settle in and relax for the night. Um, oh, by the way, as always, everybody, uh, I'm going to be linking the articles and everything used in today's thing into the Discord at the end. Yeah, so keep an eye on the Discord in our like new discoveries channel um, if you want to see any of the links and read about them a little more in depth or see any of that sort of stuff. So this here is the piece of Icelandic spar in question, right? It's a, it's a very nice little thing. I have already put the dot on the top. It's basically just black crayon from my son. And I just, cr I just rubbed off some of the black crayon and smooshed it on there so that it would stay because that's all we have to work with. But you can even see on this camera, so let's see if we can see it, because if you look through there, you can see the dot, and then if we flip it, there you go. You see how it kind of looks, it looks almost like a, bu like a bug, like a, like wings on a bug or something with the, with the thing in the center. That is the, that is the birefringence in action. That is the, the duality of the image uh, being refracted through the sunstone. Looks like a poop. What do you mean it looks like a poop? It's not, it's not a poop not even brown. It's black. Icelandic spar, as I said, was probably very common in that area. And it seemed that this rock had a very large mine with high quality pieces. This here is one example of one of those mines in, in Eastern Iceland. And as I said, they are largely found in Iceland, but they are not exclusive to Iceland, I don't believe. They called it a mine. A mine! So this uh, mine supplied the whole of Europe with an enormous amount of transparent calcite crystals from the mid-17th century until 1975, and the mine was shut down because the remaining deposits were of such poor quality, it was not considered good enough. Now, mid-17th century, for those keeping track at home, it's like a solid 400 years, 500 years after the end of the Viking Age. This obviously is not the time period where this particular mine would have been used. However, the fact that there was a mine there that lasted a couple hundred years <laughs> uh, indicates that the... And uh, yeah, so I think that's why most people just kind of indicate that Icelandic spar was the one that was used. That and the fact that they did have this piece of Icelandic spar that was found in the naval context on that ship out of England. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's possible that this might be a piece that was descended from Vikings who were using it in Iceland or, or people coming over from Norway or whatever. And I, I think that that is very speculative. And it's and to say that the reason why the British used Icelandic spar for navigation was solely because the Vikings used it is presumptive without more evidence showing a tie or a link there. Another source here uh, is used to describe the Icelandic spar 
talking more about how this theory kind of came to be made. You know, we have the we have the discussion in Hroff and Saga uh, talking about how they used it. Saying here, it wasn't until the 1960s that the concepts of Vikings using Polaroid light for navigation gained some weight. So let's take a look at the video that I had of me trying to do this. That in that direction, which is where the... Wait, why is the vid not showing? What the heck? It could be a copyright fail state or something because I'm trying to stream a video. That's so bonkers. That would be a that would be pretty insane. But I mean, it would make sense that that would be what it is, which is really annoying because it's my video. Okay, buckle up, folks. This is going to be the jankiest thing I've ever done on stream. I've done a lot of janky things on my stream, right? And get ready for this. This is going to be so funny. I'm I am excited. Now, apparently the theory behind this is that you're supposed to take the two dots that you see via the birefringence and you're supposed to angle the, the, the spar until they both appear to have the same luminosity or darkness to them. Now, uh, it does seem to do that in that direction, which is where the sun was before the clouds rolled in. But I, I noticed that you do have similar densities to the light when you angle it in other directions as well. It's not always super dark, and maybe that's the indicator, but... Uh, I'm not entirely convinced. Now, checking it on the short side uh, of the of the spar, it, it kind of has similar results, although it's a lot more fuzzy, a lot harder to tell. So I'm wondering whether or not the piece that I have is just too small to do the task. It's possible that I might need something a little bit bigger in order to do it accurately, uh, or I just maybe don't know what I'm doing, having never done this before. You guys can see the results that I had were spotty. Um, I was noticing that the Icelandic spar image, like I was getting similar darknesses to them when I was looking in different directions across the sky. And so I'm not sure whether or not it was a case of like it needed to be angled, like if I had to look at it through an angle going in there or it, it's just all of the instructions that I'm reading online are very difficult to pinpoint like I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be looking I'm not sure how high in the sky I'm supposed to be looking I'm not sure what angle I'm supposed to be holding it at and I think that the Vikings would have had a much more streamlined educational system on something like that to the point where they probably didn't need to explain it because it was just going to be a simple situation of like you know oh my ship swain Bragi told me that you know you hold the Icelandic spar this way and you look at it that way you know, it, it was uh, Viking society was very word of mouth in terms of how they passed down their stories and their legends. Uh, they wouldn't have had this written down. You know, they wouldn't have had any kind of record for it. It literally would have just been like a bunch of guys who knew each other passing this message down through time. As you know, you were working on ships. It was very word of mouth. Without having that sort of instructional process written out for us, we're working kind of blind. So uh, I would imagine that the difficulties that I was having come largely from A, inexperience with using it, uh, B, uh, based on the size of the sunstone that was found in that British ship that we found, it was easily like maybe three times the size. It looked like a piece that was maybe more like this. Well, three times, the, at least three times the size. <laughs> at least three times the size. <laughs> The question I think comes down to, does my uh, inability to replicate the experiment mean that Icelandic spar was not used as a sunstone? No, it doesn't. Experiments are meant to be kind of tried multiple different ways. And I think that me doing it and having a little bit of difficulty doesn't necessarily rule out the fact that these were used. Um, however, I think that it does raise those questions of what sort of practical knowledge did people trying to use sunstones need to have in order to operate them? Is there a process by which they were learning this? Was it just kind of practical on the job? Did it require a lot of practice? Is there like a simple trick that's hiding in there somewhere? Because I'm not the only one who's had trouble with stuff like this. I was watching YouTube videos and other things of people trying to do it. And a couple of people were coming out saying, oh, well, this theory is bunk because like, you know, we weren't able to determine the location of this anyway. And it doesn't matter where you looked in the sky before you're getting this. It was just like it, it was it was very wishy washy on some people. But I think that that really just comes down to user error. <laughs> Navigate the Icelandic seas using this one weird trick. <laughs> Cartographers hate him. <laughs> GPS manufacturers don't want you to know this one life hack. 
But apart from that, I do think that the tool probably has something to play in this because this is a this is a small piece. And even when we were dealing with this, I had like, you know, that that dot on there that looked to be about the size of the dot that they were using on the other pieces. But the birefringence coming through that object um, showing the two dual images, which you can see pretty clearly right there. Like I said, they look kind of like wings around that. It seems like they want it to be two distinct objects, right, that are right next to each other or at least like very lightly overlapped. And I think that maybe having a bigger one would help clarify that picture a little bit better. Kind of like how if you have a bigger telescope, you could see farther away. You know, I wonder if having a bigger piece of Icelandic spar would create a more clear image uh, that would help you kind of do these things a little bit better. But yeah, guys, I mean, that's that's kind of all I have to say on this subject. I, I think that the the idea of a Viking sunstone is super interesting and, and definitely worth looking into a little bit more. But as for me, I'm going to have to keep practicing. <laughs> Yeah, guys, that's that's all I have in terms of in terms of the Viking Sunstone. I think we talked through everything. I have enough here to farm you people for a YouTube video. <laughs> he used you for content. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> that's right, chat. I used you for content. You all came here this morning expecting to hear your archaeology fun facts and your viking shenanigans and your sun stones and instead it is I who comes out on top. I am the one with the content now and you will fuel my dark YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah guys thanks for coming in i really appreciate you all uh this stream would not be anything if it wasn't from you guys my loyal viewers and and my wonderful mods uh thank you guys so much